In this video, we're going to walk through the problem of a slow leak on the irrigation system. Very first thing that we're going to do, let's just jump right into it. The first thing that we need to do, as always, is ask questions. What makes you think that this is a leak on the irrigation system? Now, here's the thing. If you're a technician, irrigation technician, you're going to get called on this quite a bit and it not be the irrigation system simply because Plumbers are quite expensive and usually we're less expensive than plumbers. So the homeowner is hoping and praying that it's a little leak on the irrigation system and not a $5,000 problem with the local plumber, right? So we're going to start off and ask, what makes you think that you've got a leak? You got water anywhere? Did you get a big water bill? Whatever it is. So we're there. Even if it's a plumbing problem, we're going to try to walk through our steps and find out exactly what's going because it, because if it's a leak on the, the main line going to the house or something, we can fix that, right? That's within our skill set and we've been called out. So let's walk through here and try to figure out what's going on. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out whether it's a leak on the irrigation system, right? If it's actually a leak. So in our process of going through here, hopefully your homeowner is going to walk you out to the problem and say, look, here's a big wet spot. This is our problem. So we need to determine, A, if it's an actual leak or maybe even a problem with the system itself because I've been called out before for a leak, a big you know, puddle of water, a perpetually wet spot, and there's a couple of things that could be going on there besides an actual leak. It may be a head that is misadjusted and now it swings around and sprays right into the side of the building or a bush or something like that and then just dropping all of its water or maybe the head itself isn't even turning, right? If it's a rotor, maybe it's locked into place and just spraying in one place and causing a big puddle of water there. Look at the run times on your timer, right? We're going to go through and I mean, maybe not a, a full timer troubleshoot for this problem, but you definitely want to check the settings in the timer and see how often they're running it. If for some reason, just somehow that zone that's, you know, in the area of the leak has, is now it's running for two hours instead of 20 minutes just because somebody, you know, did something wrong on the timer or maybe the timer's going bad or something. But we want to check our settings just to make sure, eliminate something that's going on that's not actually a leak, but it could be putting a puddle of water down somewhere. So None of that's a problem. Okay, so really what we're doing here is going to determine whether the leak is happening on the house or it's happening on the irrigation system. And sometimes this will be a problem figuring this out if there's no wet spots, but yet the meter is turning, the leak wheel on the meter is, is doing a slow turn. And if you don't know what the leak wheel is, it's actually a little smaller thing on the dial that shows you small amounts of water going through. And this is for the analog meters. But on the digital meters, usually there'll be one little light or a little thing on the readout that's clicking to show that small amounts of water are moving through. And sometimes you may have to pull up the um, uh, manual for that particular meter if it's in one of the newer digital meters and you can't quite figure out how to see if it's leaking. You got a phone, L look up the, uh, the the instruction manual for that particular meter and it'll tell you how to look for that because every meter has a way of showing small amounts, less than a gallon moving through the meter. So we're going to check our meter to see if it shows a leak. Now, this is not 100% guaranteed that's going to tell you what you really need to know because I know of meters right now that the leak wheel is not working on it, right? And there's been a leak there before, but the meter wasn't showing it and the homeowner wasn't getting charged for the water, but it was a water problem on the property. If we've determined that the leak wheel is turning, we need to isolate the irrigation system from the house. So if there is a backflow preventer and there should be a backflow preventer or some kind of isolation valve on the irrigation system to isolate it from your house system, we'll close that up and then isolate the irrigation system from the house. Check your meter. Is it still turning? If it is, especially if it's a slow turn on that leak wheel, chances are 90% chance it's probably a toilet leaking, right? And so in those situations to where there were no external 
uh, or visible signs of leak on the property. The meter was slowly turning. I've isolated the irrigation system, but the meter's still turning. I tell the, the homeowner, the customer, go inside your house and shut off the water valve for all of your toilets. It only takes a couple of minutes. And if they do that and determine that that shut the, the leak off, I mean, like I said, about 90% of the time, like small leaks on the house are in the toilets. And that's relatively easy to fix. You can just rebuild the insides of the toilet or whatever. I mean, that's for somebody else or the homeowner, but we're trying to figure out what the situation is. So let's say that we have isolated the irrigation system from the house and determined that it is the irrigation system because when we shut the valve off, the meter stopped turning. So now we know it's the irrigation system. And so if we don't know where the leak is, we're still trying to track it down, what's going on, let's find all of our valve boxes and open them up. Any, any ground level box, anywhere that we've got, open it up and look, obviously watching out for spiders and whatnot, but check your valve boxes and look for presence of moisture in there that may give you some indication that there's a leak nearby. Also go out and check the the lowest head in every zone to see if there's a little bit of water around that. Now we've addressed this in another video about you know one zone leaking or a head leaking where there's something stuck in the valve and a little bit of water is coming through the valve and then exiting the lowest head in the zone. So if you see some water around the lowest head or you actually see a little swirl in a puddle on top of the head, then it's probably a valve that's leaking out. So if we can't find any of that, um, it's going to get more difficult from here. But let's talk about if we actually have a, uh, a, a puddle, right, and, or just a wet spot. If it's too wet for us to determine and the spot's too large, you may have to shut the system off, the, shut the water off on the irrigation system and come back in a couple of days, show up there early in the morning, make sure that it's dry, turn the system on, and if it's a very slow leak, you may have to come back later in the day and start looking for the presence of water or a little puddle somewhere, or some wetness or something like that. But this is just how it goes. If it's a slow leak and it's a huge wet spot, well, you can't dig up the entire yard looking for that. It's much better to just shut it off and come back on another day and then recheck it, turn the system back on and look for the water there. So now, slowly but surely, like we're eliminating all of the different things that could be happening for a slow leak. But, um, you know, one thing I wanted to say here, looking at my notes, that is that these kind of problems, even if you do have a wet spot somewhere, always hedge your bet on that. Because in my area, there's quite a bit of elevation change or whatever. We live in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. So there's, you know, every yard's got a little bit of elevation uh, pitch to it or whatever. So we've had situations to where we walk up, the customer says, I got a wet spot here. We determine all the things. Yes, it is a leak on the irrigation system. I've checked the meter and you figure, okay, well, I see a little wet spot here. Let's dig it up and fix it. And then you dig it up and it's like, well, the leak's not there. It's further up the line, especially if you've got a pipe that's got some tilt in it. What'll happen is, it'll say the leak, and, and I've had situations get wildly out of control because of this and then you know you keep digging and digging and you know you go three foot up and dig and it's still leaking well what happens is is that you've got your pipe and sometimes like a little rivulet of water will run down the bottom of the pipe and so you dig it up and there's water there oh gosh i found the the leak and then you're looking around what i suggest you do in those situations is put your hand around the pipe and if the water is flowing down the pipe and then it'll start dripping off of your hand right there. Okay, well then you dig back a little more, dig back a little more. And like I said, sometimes this can blow up on you. And then I've had situations where the actual leak was like 30 feet away, and just a slight incline on a hill, but the water was running down the bottom of the pipe all the way 30 feet down and then showing up at the flat place or the, the bottom of the, the zone. So these are all the things that just to, to keep in mind, but let's talk about leak detection. Okay, because leak detection has come a long way in the last decade or two, and we have traditional leak detection services, maybe you have one in your area, that have some equipment, you know, it's generally, a, you know, a half a van worth of stuff here, 
And what they do is they connect up to the, uh, the backflow preventer and they inject some gas, a particular gas, I, I forget what it is, but they're injecting a gas into the line and then they're going to listen with really high-tech listening device. They're going to scan and try to hear the bubbles because the gas that they're injecting into the line is going to cause a sound when it comes out the leak. And we've used this before, and typically it starts at, you know, $450 to $600 for them to come out and do a detection on it. Usually these companies won't fix the leak. They'll leave it to you to fix, but they'll find the leak. And this is very valuable if you're working in a parking lot or something like that to where the leak is happening. You know it's happening, but just there's no way of seeing the water. You're probably going to have to call in a leak detection on that. But in the years since this kind of leak detection technology has come out, we've had several more things come out. And if you look online, there's a lot of smaller versions of this that are listening for the leak and trying to detect uh, that leak. And those may range from $500 to $1,000. And I've never tried any of those. I'm just telling you that they're out there. I'd like to start buying them or find somebody that's got one and do some videos with them to see if they really work that well. But here's something that's come out lately, and it's quite expensive, and there's now services popping up that have the ground-penetrating radar. Okay, um, and I think I'll, I'll put a link down below of a company that has a particular kind of a GPR that looks more or less like a, a lawnmower. It's just, you know, you, you run it over the ground, and it doesn't actually see the the pipes or the wire or anything like that but more or less what it's looking for is changes in density in the ground and so it can tell where the pipe is because of the trench that was dug for the pipe and now the the soil is less dense there so and if there's a leak going on then definitely that changes the water density and it shows up just right away on the gpr but the just from this one particular company they have two models one's about i don't know i think sixteen thousand, and another's about twenty thousand. Uh, and in my town, there's a company that has one of those. It's actually my former company that I sold about 10 years ago. And they've got one, and I haven't had an opportunity to have them come out and, and use it yet. I've been interested to see the model that they have. But I'm really just kind of talking about this to inform you that there are technological alternatives out there. And if you're doing this full time, if you're going to start an irrigation company or add irrigation service to your landscaping company, either find you a good leak detection service that you can trust and call on when needed or start looking into some of this equipment. And like I said, if you're doing this full time, then you're going to get these kind of calls pretty regular. And a lot of times it's just super difficult to find slow leaks. So best of luck to you.